on this week's episode of Bayou Wild TV. All right, Rand, right. this is where she was pointing when we were over there. Find the best find her. You know, in 35 years of doing television, one of my early producers told me there's two things you can't go wrong with, and that's dogs and kids. And today, we're combining both to tell you a great episode and a story about a very special dog. Running around, most time they'll just see her sort of be pointing a dragonfly or butterfly or something, constantly running around, swimming. She's very active. Um, around the camp, I normally chase her and lay with her with the blanket and act like she's my pillow. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Can I put it on video? Hold it up. Got it. Closed captioning is brought to you by Global Outdoors. Find your next adventure and share your experiences with others by downloading the Global Outdoors mobile app or visiting globaloutdoors.com. Every day, we strive to preserve traditions that have spanned generations. Around every turn of the bayou, Mother Nature reveals unique people, places, and experiences. And the bounty of animals and fish. Well, in Louisiana, we just call that land yak. I'm Don Dubuque. I'm Chris Lacombe. I'm Captain Martha Spencer. Join us as we document the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. You know, in 35 years of doing television, one of my early producers told me there's two things you can't go wrong with, and that's dogs and kids. And today, we're combining both to tell you a great episode and a story about a very special dog. This dog's in training, so what we're gonna do, she points, I'm gonna have her camera bring her up and get her ball. You know, it's been a, a great experience hunting with her, and so that had always been our intentions. And certainly, um, you know, after this, we were pretty concerned if she would ever get back to herself. But she's always shown a ton of promise. She's never seen a, a dragonfly or a lizard that she wasn't ready to point. Hi, I'm Miss Louisiana Julia Claire Williams on behalf of the Louisiana Propane Dealers. I'm sure you know that clean, affordable propane gas is used in houses across our state. It's used in cooking, water heaters, drying clothes, and heating homes. But did you know that if you ever run out of propane, you need a certified dealer to inspect your system for leaks before it's refilled? That's the law. Propane is safe energy for everyone, and we want to keep it that way. Outdoorsmen, athletes, and parents know the importance of Florida water to stay cool. And whether you're on the water, on the job, at the gym, or on the ball field, keeping cool just got simple with Cool Blue products. Cool Blue refreshing face and body wipes are for everyone. Use them at home, at work, or at play to clean up, cool down, and stay refreshed. Find them at Rouse's Supermarkets or online at CoolBlueProducts.com. 
This is Don Dubuque asking you to join me as a member of the Coastal Conservation Association. For 30 years, CCA has worked in Louisiana to conserve our incredible fisheries, making sure that our fishing is great today and for generations to come. Whether looking out for redfish and specks, eliminating gill nets, building reefs across the coast, or work at the state capitol and in D.C., CCA is doing what's best for the fish and the sport we love so much. Your $30 membership will ensure that this work and our great fishing endures well into the future. Go to CCALouisiana.com and join CCA today. We're out here at Crane Creek in Popperville, Mississippi for a bird hunt with Drew Dubuque, Camille, and Josie Dubuque. And they're going to tell you their story about their hunting dog, Betsy. So Betsy, you know, she, uh, she splits time between a, a place on Lake Catherine and a house in Metairie, and she certainly She's got the life, you know. She sleeps in beds with, with my daughters and, and, and kind of sprawls out between the pool in Metairie and the dock on, on Lake Catherine. Whoa, whoa, easy, easy. Ready? Yep. Whoa. Running around, most of the time you'll just see her and she'll just be pointing a dragonfly or butterfly or something. Constantly running around, swimming. I oh, love water. She swims in our pool all day. Then we, go, then we go to the camp, she swims in the lake all day. She's very active. Um, we'll like bark a lot and strong. Um, around the camp, I normally chase her and lay with her with the blanket and act like she's my pillow. I got a call from Amy that was, it was pretty frantic. You know, Betsy's got a lot of energy, so for her to be kind of nostalgic is it, different. And, and so I could hear the concern, but once I saw a video of Betsy and the condition she was in, it, it was very clear that it was, it was certainly an emergency. I saw that she was like, her legs were just giving up on her and she just kept wobbling and she wasn't running, she was just walking very slow. It looked like she was like failing and she was like not trying, she was just giving up on herself and like, like not walking, just falling to the floor because her back legs were like tired and she, the back leg just fell. Betsy came out of the kennel and she just like, it was like Bambi on ice. She stood there, fell, wobbled around, and got back up, and we knew something went right. I just thought she was very, very tired from the camp because normally she takes a lot of naps after the camp. So if that was that, I thought it was just she was taking naps. She was fine when I left and, and Come to find out, it takes a couple days for it to, to really set. Um, my mom was like, she was like panicking, so she called the vet that we normally go to. And they said to go to the 24-hour vet, so we brought her there. And then Drew was just kind of calm and keeping all of us calm. 
She, didn't want, she went barking, but she just wouldn't walk, so I had to pick her up, carry her all the way to the kennel. She was in the kennel, she was just dead. I had to like, she wouldn't go in the kennel, I had to pick her up, put her in there. Once Amy and Drew got her to the med vet, um, my, our cousin Lauren, Dr. Lauren Dubuque, who's Betsy's veterinarian, she was obviously able to have contact with the emergency vet and oversaw the whole process. And, and they told us that it, it, it was going to be a long shot, that, that Betsy was in a pretty bad way. And certainly, they weren't making any promises. Um, they did a couple blood transfusions and, and gave her some plasma. And, it was touch and go for 24, almost 48 hours. They were calling us, giving us nonstop, like, and they called my mom and said it was rat poison. And uh, we were like, okay. They told us it was gonna be expensive. I remember telling Amy that, uh, I said, listen, um, if something happens, you just gotta tell the kids that the dog is at the vet and I'm gonna rush home and, and I'll help you explain it to them when I get there. <laughs> well, her last words to me were, would you stop, I got this. Well, she's got four kids, so a sick dog was no problem. I was across the country duck hunting, having cocktails with my buddy, so. I was kind of like surprised because I didn't know really what it was. And I was kind of nervous because I didn't know, because most dogs don't survive from rat poison. So I was, gonna, I was very nervous what was gonna happen. Half of myself was saying she was gonna die, half of myself thought she was gonna be okay. Um, they were nervous, they were scared. I was just, I don't know, I knew she was gonna be all right. Betsy ended up recovering. It was actually a pretty quick recovery. She was a little woozy for a couple of days and then she kind of got back to normal. And it was around Thanksgiving time and I had some extra time. So I finally decided this might be a good time for me to bring Betsy to my place and do some training just to see if she had it in, in it to where she could become a bird dog. Catch, tag, win. If you like state management of Red Snapper and want to help ensure longer Red Snapper seasons, there's now a tournament for you. The Timos Taggett Louisiana Red Snapper Tournament is a summer-long tournament for you, the Louisiana ROLP holder. Catch a snapper, snap a picture, and you're entered. It's that simple. Enjoy fishing, help contribute valuable data for Red Snapper management, and win prizes. Visit tagitla.com. This is one of the latest inventions for high-tech seafood boiling. This is called the Boil Boss. It's a pretty simple apparatus. What this does is it does not dilute the strength of your boil. So your salt and your spices still remain real potent in there without putting a lot of extra water. The Boil Boss, wonderful invention. We love our children. We protect them. We guide them. We prepare them for life in the world. With all that we do, from deep in our hearts, we cannot control all things. Life-threatening illnesses and disabilities affect far too many of our children each year. While we cannot change the circumstance, we can make dreams come true. Dreams to provide hope, to provide spiritual healing and strength, to provide moments of happiness and relief in the hardest of times. We can give a glimmer of light and hope in a time of darkness and despair. Join huntofalifetime.org to help make dreams come true, to provide hope for children with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Hunt of a Lifetime is a nonprofit organization fulfilling dreams for hunting and fishing trips to youth 21 and under with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Visit huntofalifetime.org to learn how you can make a difference.
continuing this week's episode. You know, we've all got hunting buddies, and some of our best hunting buddies are our best friends, our hunting dogs. Okay, walk around her and go in front. All right, we got a bird here somewhere. Whoa, whoa, easy, easy. Ready? Ready, Chris? Yep. So Betsy, you know, she uh, she splits time between a, a place on Lake Catherine and, and a house in Metairie, and she certainly, she's got the life, you know? Running around, most time you'll just see her and she'll just be pointing a dragonfly or butterfly or something, constantly running around, swimming. Oh, loves water. She swims in our pool all day. Then we, go, then we go to the camp, she swims in the lake all day. She's very active, um, will like bark a lot and strong. Um, around the camp I normally chase her and lay with her with the blanket and act like she's my pillow. There's one right behind us, we got a point. Well, I, I worked with her for four or five days, 15 minutes a day, typical things. I'm not the world's greatest trainer, and if a dog points a bird, holds it till I get there, goes back and retrieves it and brings it to me, that's all I ask of a bird dog. Betsy has become a really good bird dog. Get him up, Betsy, get him, get him. You could tell, I mean, so much of it is natural and instinctive. And, you know, um, Uncle Don was able to polish her up a little bit and, and, and really turned it into more than we could ever ask for, right? There's maybe a few things that some guys might say, not say she's a completely finished bird dog, but um, she might come up a little short on retrieves, bringing the bird back and want to parade it around a little bit, but that's certainly okay with me. But you know, for my, my family and kids to be able to spend time outside and, and walk behind her and, and bring home something to eat after, it, it's been a, a great experience. When we're quail hunting, humans can't really smell quail. You only can use a, a bird, I mean a, a dog, for quail hunting. So I guess it's like her recess. thing about hunting quail out here at uh, Crane Creek. You can bring the kids out here. It's leisurely. It's not a tough hunt. They can keep up with you and walk. And if they, when they're out of school, they love to come along. And eventually they'll start carrying a BB gun and doing a little bit of shooting, learning gun safety, learning what's going on. And actually we get some pretty good assistance. They're pretty good with a camera and can shoot some video for us. But they enjoy it coming out here. And I think it's because it's their dog. And it's not just a house dog or a pet. It's a real working companion. I think they even enjoy it more. Get him! Get him! Yeah, so all my kids are, are really big duck hunters. We, we deer hunt. We certainly do a lot of fishing. And so this is kind of a whole different element when uh, when their dog is with them. So it's kind of funny for them to see her 
working birds and know she's the same dog that sleeps under the covers at night. Um, I think today Josie said, uh, boy, Betsy likes bird hunting like we like Christmas morning. I think she does hunting to have fun for herself. If you ask me Betsy's favorite thing, probably out here, because she can run free and get what birds and what she loves. That's a boy over there. That's a girl. This is a boy. We got six and six. I thought this one. Point, shoot, and air fry. Because of habitat loss, wild populations of quail in Louisiana have seen sharp decline over the years. Many hunters turn to shooting preserves to enjoy upland bird hunting opportunities. All right, today we're in Poplarville, Mississippi, and we brought our canine friends to help us with the latest episode of Louisiana Fish Fry's Wild Potato. These dogs are trained to locate the scent of a hiding quail. They lock in and wait for the hunter's command before flushing the bird out of the brush. All right, we got a bird here somewhere. All right, mission in the field has been accomplished. We've got our quail, and it's ready for the air fryer. Moisten your fresh quail breast in egg wash or ice cold water. Coat the quail completely in Louisiana fish fry chicken air fryer seasoned coating mix. Shake off excess and place quail in the air fryer basket in a single layer. Air fry at 400 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. And with just a few minutes to go on our air fryer, take our tray out and flip the quail breast. When the quail is golden brown, you're ready to enjoy maximum crunch with less mess than conventional fry. Make it a meal by serving your quail on a bed of Louisiana Fish Fry Products Cajun Dirty Rice. For more great recipes, visit LouisianaFishFry.com. Delta Marina is Plaquemines Parish fishing one stop. Get live bait, fuel, ice, tackle, and marine supplies. Then launch into the world's most productive saltwater fishing. Return to the fishing cleaning station, relax in first class cabins overlooking the bayou, all in Delta Marina's safety video monitored parking lot. Need a fishing charter guide? Delta Marina can hook you up. Cook your catch in your kitchenette or dine in the upstairs restaurant. Visit Delta Marina for a day or a week. Stop in just off Highway 11 down Rosemary Drive in Empire. Visit the deltamarina.com. When you're hungry and you need something quick to do, show our Uncle Larry stewing a few. You know Uncle Larry, he's my man, he's got stew in a few. He's loading his van, we'll have stew in a few. Stew in a few. We'll have stew in a few. Stew in a few. Just call Uncle Larry and we'll have stew in a few. What? Outdoorsmen, athletes, and parents know the importance of Florida water to stay cool. And whether you're on the water, on the job, at the gym, or on the ball field, keeping cool just got simple with Cool Blue products. Cool Blue refreshing face and body wipes are for everyone. Use them at home, at work, or at play to clean up, cool down, and stay refreshed. Find them at Rouse's Supermarkets or online at CoolBlueProducts.com. Sit. Hand. Good guy. Good guy. 
looking for a hookah bowl. After decades of hunting, I've gone through an awful lot of hunting dogs, an awful lot of breeds. You get attached to each and every one of them. And just like a hunting buddy or a family member, when they pass on, it's a sad time. Her AKC registered name was Chocolate Head Gracie, a post-Hurricane Katrina puppy who quickly and naturally learned to hunt and over her 16 years, she and I, besides Louisiana, traveled to Mississippi, Texas, Kansas, and South Dakota, where she found and retrieved quail, doves, woodcock, pheasants, chuckers, ducks, and a Canada goose. Along the way, she was courageous and injured by encounters with tin, barbed wire, cactus thorns, a cottonmouth bite, and a porcupine quill, but was as gentle as she was tough with other dogs and kids. She even served as the Grand Marshal of the Marty Paws Parade. Memories as I laid of one of the best friends a man can ever have to rest beneath a cypress tree. George Vest proclaimed in an 1870 courtroom trial about the killing of a foxhound named Old Drum. A man's dog stands by him in poverty, health and sickness. He will sleep on the cold ground where the wintry winds blow and snow drives fiercely, if only he can be near his master's side. He will kiss the hand that has no food to offer. He will lick the wounds and sores that come encounter with the roughness of the world. He guards the sleep of his pauper master as if he were a prince. The one absolutely unselfish friend a man can have in this selfish world, the one that never proves ungrateful or treacherous, Whoa. is his dog. Come here. Whoa. Whoa. Gracie's spirit and bloodline lives on through her prodigy, Smokey Lily. Poet and storyteller Rudyard Kipling got it right. The price of a good gun dog is a broken heart in the end. Till we meet on the other side, rest in peace, Chocolate Head Gracie. <laughs>